is chief political commentator at The Independent, John Rental. Uh, John, good to see you this morning. Uh, Keir Starmer on his way to mid-beds and then up to Tamworth on a victory lap. A very good night for Labour. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it is the second coming of uh, Blairism. These are the sort of results that uh, Tony Blair got as leader of the opposition. Um, and it suggests that Labour is uh, heading for that kind of swing in a general election. Of course, I mean, Labour's going to be starting from a much lower base, so we're not, we're not talking about an absolutely huge Labour majority at the general election, but it's... Uh, it's certainly, certainly looking pretty good for them. Yeah, let's just look at Tamworth. This is interesting. When you look at the actual number of votes cast, Labour came first, obviously, Conservative, down. There has also been a switch to other parties. Reform UK had 1,373 votes. They came third. Uh, yes, but that's not, uh, not very significant, to be honest, Peter. I mean, I think uh, uh, you've got to look at the, the, the swing. Uh, that's the, the swing is the thing. The swing is the one measure that you can use to, to compare results across, uh, across uh, time. Uh, and Tamworth is interesting because there was a by-election in Tamworth uh, when Tony Blair was leader of the opposition mm. in 1996. It was called South East Staffordshire then. Uh, and actually, Keir Starmer got a bigger swing uh, a, a last night uh, than Tony Blair achieved in South East Staffordshire. So that does, that does tell you something and the mid beds result was uh, was extraordinary as as your reporter said because of the co of, of the split vote between labor and the lib dems mm -hmm. how much are local issues uh, playing a part in these by elections and we talk about how much we can actually extrapolate for a national picture two uh, mp's who had stood down under scandal how much <clears throat> was the conservative party being punished by their local voters here well, that's a very good question. I mean, I think there's, it, it, it's it's impossible to to, to disentangle people's um, uh, upset at Nadine Doris treating her seat as if it's uh, as if it's her personal uh, property and using it to uh, to get in, get her revenge on Rishi Sunak for not giving her a peerage. I mean, it all seems incredibly mm. petty, uh, uh, part of the Tory civil war, and the voters clearly wanted to punish that action. I mean. We saw that local factors could have a, a, an effect in Uxbridge, in, uh, in, in Boris Johnson's old seat in July, because the Tories actually managed to hold that by running a single issue campaign mm. on uh, the ultra low emission zone issue. Uh, but that, uh, that could only save them in one, in one seat. It, it couldn't really do, do the business elsewhere. No, no, quite. When you look at the latest projections, I was reading this is about 11,000 voters. There are boundary changes before the general election. They use some very clever methods here, multi-level regression, post-stratification. Essentially, it, it reinforces what you said about the swing. If this was to be replicated, we'd see a Labour victory on the scale that we saw in 97, 190 seat majority. That would be convincing. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm trying to say is that you you can't read across from from by-election results to a, to a national picture. But what you can do is you can compare by-elections now with by-elections when Tony Blair was leader, and you could say that 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 does suggest that Labour's going to get the same sort of swing in the general election. Uh, but that doesn't that doesn't mean it's going to get the same sort of majority that Tony Blair got. I mean, we're looking at a we're looking on these results. I would say we're looking at a Labour majority of up to 60. Right. Uh, I mean, it could, it could be the, the lower end of, you know, it could be towards, towards nothing. Uh, yeah. It could be a very small majority indeed. Uh, but the way things are going, I mean, the, the extraordinary thing about the results yesterday is that they suggest things are still moving in Keir Starmer's favour, whereas yeah. you'd expect the government to, to be sort of narrowing the gap, to be pulling things back towards, the, towards a general election. But that's, that's still a year away and there's lots of, lots of time for things to get even worse for Rishi Sunak. Mm -hmm. John, we've now had three by-elections in the last fortnight uh, that have all gone uh, Labour's way. What will Labour strategists take from this, given where we are uh, and where we're <laughs> heading over the course of the next year? And what about Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives? What do they need to be doing with the time they have left? Well, once Labour strategists have stopped dancing around the room, um, <laughs> They need to uh, they need to sit down and think about uh, how how to deal with the incredible problems of that that, that face a face an incoming government uh, at some point uh, some point next year. 
or possibly uh, the, the very latest, uh, January 2025. Um, but that result in Scotland was was another very good result for Labour, and uh, uh, that that make, makes a Labour majority government uh, much more plausible, because if Labour's going to win uh, 20, 25 seats in Scotland, uh, then that brings the winning post for a Labour majority uh, closer, and uh, they are no doubt cock-a-hoop. Mm. John Rental, thanks very much indeed for giving us your thoughts and analysis this morning on those two by-elections, the results coming in overnight. Yeah.